Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 10 of the anime series Dance with Devils. And I was completely sidelined by the revelation in this episode, completely caught me off guard, and um, effectively making Ritsuka's family tree just that much more strange um it was already complex as it was you know her brother's actually her cousin and and the spawn of you know a vampire and her aunt and all this kind of stuff who died in childbirth um and she's been looking for her mother as we know since like episode one where she was kidnapped held by the vampires it was in the early going left for speculation who had her and we found out a little ways away uh you know into the series who had her the vampires and now we have jack coming and <laughs> approaching her as lindo is now you know in, in bed uh in convalescence and she's kind of taking care of him much as he was kind of doing in the previous episode and we're flashing back on their history from Ritsuka's perspective, which was actually really cool, um, even going so far as to have him saving a cat from a tree, risking himself and uh, risking his own health in just a harsh rainstorm to preserve the flowers, you know, outside of their home because Ritsuka wanted to make sure they were safe. And, you know, we're seeing that she's very much appreciative of everything he has been doing for her, much as he was sort of cataloging in his own memory all those things he did for her and how much she has meant to him. We're seeing it from the other perspective. And, um, <laughs> as I say, once Jack comes calling, I was like, Oh crap, where is this going to go? And, uh, in between those scenes, had we seen, you know, Meiji, uh, Yuri and Shiki in a very awesome musical sequence, it kind of reminded me of shades of, uh, character dynamics. You might've seen in like the musical film Greece or something along those lines where the guys are questioning sort of the main character, you know, how do you really feel about this girl, man? You know, I mean, she's kind of getting between you and us, and we've got to figure this out. And I really loved that vibe. I really loved that whole thing where you almost get the sense that if Rem would just come clean with these guys, they'd support him. Like, they're all sort of playfully going back and forth and even not so playfully, you know, talking about who wants the girl. They all want the girl. You know, forget the Grimoire. They want the girl, you know. And the Grimoire would just be the icing on the cake. And Rem is still keeping bottled up. This is where we left the previous episode, why Ritsuka called him out. And I had been under the mistaken impression that she must have heard all of his, you know, lyrics and his portion of the song between the song he and uh, Lindo had shared answering all of her questions well apparently that was like internal or something like that she hadn't actually heard all of that because it would have answered a lot of her questions and so she closed him off rightfully so and here we have these guys like you know it's his posse it's Rem's posse and they're calling him out they're like look just level with us we went to Vienna we took air quotes down the exorcists I don't know how true that is or if they're just like you know uh just using that as bartering to try to get him to open up and uh the exorcists are still out there somewhere I'd be very surprised if they managed to just wipe the floor with them all told you know um but I love that dynamic you really like I say you really get the vibe that these three would be willing to back Ram up would be willing to support him if he would just be honest that he loves Ritsuka. And that was absolutely compelling. And then just adding to that compelling nature that much more, as I say, when Jack comes a calling and he's like, you know, he brings Ritsuka to her mother effectively. And I was shocked when you see like the blood on her neck, they've been going and, and tapping that, no pun intended, um, <laughs> of the blood and everything, feasting off her without quite, I guess they've been dialing back as, you know, per Jack's dialogue that they won't, transform her into a vampire right away they can feast on her a little bit feed off of her a little bit without actually pushing that through making that you know a final objective um but then he tells this as he calls it a fairy tale about her mother and her father lord moxus the king of the devils mind blown mind freaking blown <laughs> My jaw dropped. I paused the episode. I was like, damn. <laughs> Whoa. Go back a minute. Watched it again. Yeah. Um, holy crap. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. And here is Jack, the representative of the Vampire King Nesta. And his whole sort of, you know, this whole spiel is 
to get Ritsuka to bend his will to go to Lord Nesta, who is apparently, air quotes, according to Jack, the only one who knows how to take the grimoire power out of her and can, once again, it's that promise, that faux promise, you know it's got to be complete BS, that faux promise of, oh, you'll be able to live happily ever after, all of humanity will live happily ever after, we'll just take the power out of you, nothing will happen to you, we don't really know how it's going to all work out, you know, Lord Nest is keeping that secretive, he won't tell us a thing, we're his underlings, and very understandably so, we got to be kept out of the loop, um, and plus we can't give you any information, you know, the least we know, uh, that'll be the last you know, and um, so, no, no life-threatening thing at all. You know, you just rejoin with your mother and you have a happy-go-lucky life for the rest of your days. And um, sure, no problems will occur in the siphoning out of this power. But what really impressed me, Ritsuka just sort of very, you know, quickly looks over internally all of her options. She realizes, as Jack says, her options are very limited at this point. And she's taking the reins, man. Like, you know, time and again throughout the course of the series, as I've talked back and forth with a couple of you in the comments uh, who have, you know, been following along my discussions about this show, Ritsuka is, you know, such a great female protagonist in that she's not taking this stuff lying down. Every step of the way, she's kind of flabbergasted and taken aback, as any one of us would be. I live an average life. I'm surrounded by all of this crazy stuff, constantly unfolding these manipulative people and, and everything like that. Whether friend or foe, you know, devil or vampire, the grimoire, all of this stuff. And she finally is able to have a sense of self, a pure sense of self in the revelation that Moxus is her father. Because now she understands why she has this power in her. Now she understands why all of this has been going on. She understands the power struggle. She understands and is coping. She's kind of beyond coping at this point. She's like, all right, let's rock and roll. See what happens. I mean, it looks like per the PV for the next episode, all hell's about to break loose. And we're finally calling back on uh, that precursor scene at the start of the first episode where she's in that blue gown and it almost looks like it's going to be a sacrificial event. I've been putting forth, uh, you know, in discussing it in the comments with you guys, the idea, at least from my perspective, the speculation that, you know, her life would be at risk and we might see Lindo or Rem, you know, coming to her aid uh, in a sacrificial move. Even any one of these other guys, Meiji, Yuri, and, and Shiki, I like the idea, as we were talking about, uh, some of us in the comments, Shiki being sacrificial on an angelic plane, because we know that he is a fallen angel and everything. And wouldn't that be quite compelling, even with his, his sadistic nature, wouldn't that be quite compelling if he had a 180 degree turn and was able to return to heaven or something along those lines, you know, uh, do something to gain a level of retribution and um, just recompense for the mistakes he made of old and everything uh, by sacrificing himself to save Ritsuka, whatever, whatever is going to, you know, hang in the balance of that. Um, and it's quite interesting we leave off with Jack ushering Ritsuka almost across the river Styx is the vibe I'm getting from this area. I mean, when he first brings her into their sort of vampire lair, I was like, Quindecum? This is like an offshoot of Quindecum. It kind of, the color style and the motif really reminded me of, uh, you know, that particular series, Death Parade. Um, and of course, even Jack himself, he, he almost looks like he could be right out of that series. But um, that whole motif of the river sticks and the blood moon rising and seeing Lowen again, sort of, you know, looking ominous with the moon set behind him. Rem and Lindo both being in completely separate places, but they're both sensing something ominous is afoot. Where is Ritsuka? Is the chief thought on their minds. And it's just absolutely pitched once again to be absolutely compelling and <laughs> me at the edge of my seat. And like I said, the jaw dropped when they said Moxus is your daddy. <laughs> Everything. It was like mind blown, man. Um, I didn't see that coming, and the plot she does a thicken with that with that revelation. And like, so now we thoroughly not only do we have this grand scope of this, you know, sort of demon realm war between the, these two opposing factions, the the devils and the vampires. 
But it's even something, an internal conflict within Ritzka's own family tree. <laughs> there are sides, both sides are represented. Between her brother and her father now, we have this duel of the fates, if you will. That this is all pitched to unfold with. <laughs> and it's like, damn. Oh man, this just this this show gets better by the episode. It like just you know expounds and compounds on the last revelations, and gets completely mind blowing every step of the way. And I'm just mad excited to see how this is all gonna finish out. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I really like I can speculate, I can put forth ideas, but I mean, for Moxis to suddenly be revealed to be Ritsuka's father, and that's why she has the grimoire ability, and that's why her grandfather was killed and got, you know, the devils and the vampires after him, and all of this kind of stuff. It's just crazy stuff, how all of this is unfolding. And, um, again, just pitch to excitement to see where it goes. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 10 of Dance with Devils, if you've seen it. If you're as mind-blown as I was um, by this revelation, because I, I, like I say, I couldn't have seen this coming. <laughs> Worth the damn. I don't think I even would have approached this in any of speculations that we would find that out. You know, I mean, I had wondered where her father might be, but they almost you know, like, never referenced whomever this could be. There there was never any sort of passing, fleeting glimpses, and it was just something that never occurred to me with everything else that was going on. Um, so, yeah. I mean, damn. <laughs> fantastic episode. Fantastic series thus far. Really just exciting as all hell with all these twists and turns, and, and especially now... In the early going, there were aspects I've talked about where, you know, you could kind of speculate along the lines of where they were heading with it. And most of those things fell in line. You know, the revelations time and time again would fall in line with the speculations that you would have. It was kind of like they were setting things up and giving you the impression of where they would be going with it. And it would follow through and you would feel elated because, yeah, you kind of called it, you know, this was something completely out of left field to me. I hadn't even considered the possibility that Ritsuka would have a devil daddy. <laughs> and um, otherwise, bring on the next one as soon as humanly possible, because I can't wait to see what in the hell happens next. And otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.